another video. I have a personal update. I have recently moved into our new home, which we call the Egg Dream High. I thought it would be fun to do a get rid of me video to create this look that I've been wearing so often while I answer some questions about the renovation or about HTV4 BTO home. Before I filmed this video, I had already reached out to my friends and family to ask what kind of questions people would be curious about, what are some of the questions that they can't wait to ask me. So I already have a list of questions here with me, so let's dive right in. Okay, so I'm going to start with my concealer that I've got them here. And the first question is, what is the inspiration behind your design? So my partner and I, we were both very excited about uh, the renovation of our new home. And before we even got our keys, we have already started watching a lot of videos on YouTube to get inspiration from other people. And one particular design that really stood out to us and spoke to us was Japanese Muji style and we find that it's very soothing, we like the wood tones, we feel that it gives a very comfortable um, comfortable and cozy feel which is what we really want for a home because when you just return home from a very busy work day, all you want to do is just really relax and find a place that uh, gives you the comfort of home and we find that the Muji style is the style that gives us the feeling of home. So apart from the wooden tones that we really love from a wooden design, we also think that it looks very timeless. So no matter how long we've been staying in this home, I think that the design just stays, doesn't irritate us, doesn't make us feel like wanting the design. And that's also one of the other reasons why we decided to go with a Muji theme. Let's go ahead with my foundation and here's the next question. How did you settle on your ID? So we actually met with four different people. Two are IDs, one is contractor and the other one seemed to come across as contractor that kind of market herself as an ID. With the contractors, as we were communicating with them, I felt that there was a lack of advice, input or suggestions. At the time, we were still trying to mix around a lot of different ideas and we couldn't quite put them together in a very cohesive manner. When we were talking to the contractors, it felt like the dots were not connected. The only assurance that I really got from them was that they could deliver what we want. I think it also depends on the contractors that you need. Maybe for us, um, the contractors focus a lot more on delivery, but what we wanted more was really input and we didn't have enough of that. To the IDs. Okay, so these two IDs that we met, they had very different styles in design. What really stood out with the ID that we decided to go with was that even in our first meeting, apart from our design preferences, what they asked and what they really wanted to understand was our lifestyle. They explained that design is aesthetic, but what really makes it work is when the aesthetics are also functional. So they asked very specific questions. They'd ask us like what our job is, what do we usually do, what is our routine. I told her that I study psychology, I might practice you know, research in psychology, and the first question that she asked was whether I need a study room with enough storage for books. When we told her that we really wanted a walk-in wardrobe, she would ask do I put on my makeup before I change my clothes or do I change my clothes first before I put on makeup because that will help her plan where the dressing table is. And I think that's that's really what the kind of questions that really stood out to us during the initial communication. It is very clear that they're not just designed for aesthetics, but they make sure that the aesthetics are incorporated into our lifestyle so that they become functional. Next step, I'm going to apply some powder to set this foundation in. And the next question is, did you make any changes in the orientation of your house? Yes, we did. Okay, so I think a very common changes in orientation that people do is to convert one of the bedrooms next to the master bedroom to a walk-in wardrobe but apart from that, we also switched around the original living room with the bedroom next to it so we wanted a study room that could also function as a guest room when there are guests who come stay over but with the original bedroom, which is the bedroom just next to the living room we find that the space is very small we want to fit a queen bed into it you literally have very little space to walk around, let alone a study table. 
study chair for you to do your work. And when we discuss this, I gave them an ID, they did some compilation, and they also thought that it actually makes more sense to do it this way. The original living room is obviously much bigger, it has a larger space. We can achieve so many things uh, by converting this original living room. Now we can fit a queen size bed as needed. We can also have a study desk where we do our work. <laughs> I'm actually right in this room, and as you can see, there's also a very big window that brings you to the view outside. And we can build a setting, which we did, so that we can enjoy the view while relaxing in this area. But there is a lot more potential by converting the original living room to the current study slash guest room. Well, of course, we did have some reservations at the very beginning because it's so unusual, it's so uncommon. And by doing so, we actually need to conceal off the entrance to this particular room and that makes one of the walls look a little more diagonal. We weren't too sure about the diagonal wall at the very beginning, but our IDs really kind of assured us that it will look fine with the laminate designs that they proposed. No regrets over this decision. It's very multi-purpose. It also gives off a very relaxing feel and I really like to stay here for a very long time. I just applied eye primer and now I'm ready to go in with the eyeshadow. I'm using this one from April Skin. It has these three colors which makes it so much easier so that I don't have to manually mix the colors. And uh, this is the eyeshadow palette that I've been wearing so often lately saved me so much time and hopefully it helps with this get ready with me. <laughs> the next question, what is your favorite spot at home? I have two favorite spots at home. The first one is actually this room right here. So it's our study slash guest room. I like that it can serve multiple different purposes. So I can use it to relax the study area. I can use it to look at the view. I can use it to work. I can use it to film this video. I can hold guests too. There are so many purposes that are packed into this room. There is also a lot of mood laminates that is very soothing for the eyes to see. So the second spot that I really like is actually the dining area. So I like to sit at the dining table while I take in all the design goodness from a lot of different angles and perspectives. Because we changed the orientation, now the dining area actually extends towards the entertainment room and it just opens up the space so much. It makes the room feel much bigger. I have a very extended space to entertain my guests from the entertainment room to the dining area. It just gives a very good flow to the house. I am now going to go ahead with the eyeliner. I look the weirdest when I'm applying eyeliner, so I hope I can do this. If not, please bear with it. And the next question is, why do you have two sinks in the kitchen? Okay, so I have a sink at my wet kitchen area where I will do my major dishwashing. But I also have a smaller sink uh, at my island. There was once when I was living in the States many years ago for exchange. That was in 2013. I went to visit a local's house and for them, you know, islands are quite a common thing because they have the space to build an island and they also have a sink at the island and at that moment I thought it was so, not just so pretty but also so convenient because you can be working on your island top and whenever you need to wash your hands you can just, you know, walk over one to two steps, wash your hands and continue to do your other work. I am such a clean freak. <laughs> So I always like to wash my hands whenever I get just a little dirt. Whenever I get things on my hands, I just go over to the sink, wash it. That was the motivation behind why I wanted to sink at my island. But of course, <laughs> it's very questionable because my island is very close to my wet kitchen and I could just walk a few more steps to the kitchen to wash my hands. Um, right now, my mom's living with me and sometimes she will do the cooking and when she cooks, she just doesn't allow me into the wet kitchen. I've experienced instances where I want to wash my fruits or something, but I can't go to the wet kitchen to do my washing because my mom's cooking and it's oily. So now I still see the use for having a small sink at the island. So, you know. Next up, I'm going to be doing my eyebrows and the next question is, any designs or areas that you regretted? So I really love my house so much that I haven't found any areas, any designs that I regret. Or maybe I haven't lived here long enough. I've only lived here for a month and maybe I haven't sensed any area that is particularly not very functional, not working out for us. But 
But if I could mention some things that are regrettable is the pelvic. We have a blackout curtain in our master bedroom and only in our master bedroom. The intention really is to block out light so that our sleep wouldn't be affected. The helmet is supposed to prevent light from coming in because sometimes even with blackout curtains, light can still pass through. So the helmet is supposed to prevent light from coming in, especially from the top. But we have a platform bed where our mattress sits on top of the platform. So if we're not too far from, I guess, like the ground, the floor, that means at the bottom, we can still sense the light coming in very easily. And on top of that, we have a very thick bed head just behind our mattress. The curtain can never close completely. So we also have lights coming in from those sides too. So although we tried to prevent lights from coming in with the helmet, it couldn't perform that way, unfortunately. Guys, I clearly suck at this. But anyway, I completed my eyebrows and applied a brow cara to give it a color. And now I'm going to move on with mascara. And here is the next question. How much did the renovation cost? So I would say that our renovation cost is probably on the higher side because in order to create the Muji inspired home design, which has a lot of wood tones, we have to build a lot of carpentry. So one of the areas where a lot of carpentry is built is the entrance that leads all the way to the entertainment room. In order to not make the diagonal wall look awkward, we uh, needed to build one cohesive design of uh, wood tones and laminates uh, across from the entrance all the way to the entertainment room. We also have all our carpentry built at our master bedroom. The platform where our mattress sits on is built of uh, storage. Okay, that was me trying to give you a sense of uh, what is contributing to the cost of the renovation. And our final amount comes to about 90k before appliances. Alright, next question. What was the most challenging part during the renovation process? Okay, so there are two things that were very challenging for me. Personally, because um, my partner, he had to go overseas in the middle of the renovation. So that means while he was overseas, I had to personally be in charge of the overview, going around to places to check out different items. Um, so that was hard for me. Well, before he went, he had already planned everything out, but I just have to be the person to meet with the supplier, make some you know decisions on designs and colors and then come to the site to check that it is being properly installed. So at the very beginning, I was actually very active on my Instagram to update what we were doing that week, what were the decisions we needed to make. After he left, I really was just not able to keep up. He was around, uh, fortunately, during our aircon pipes installation because that is really the thing that I wouldn't be able to understand. He was around during the electrical point installation because I wouldn't be able to understand. So the point of time when he left, it was also like a good time because all the major things that I didn't understand had already been taken care of. I mainly need to make design decisions. Still, it was rather stressful for me. You know, I love my house, it's all worth it. And I know that my partner really appreciates all the effort that I put into, you know, um, putting this house together. The second most challenging part, and I think this applies to a lot of people who are renovating their house, is to try to balance between aesthetics and price point. And we are going around exploring the market. Obviously, there is a lot of things that maybe just look better to us, but they also come with a higher price tag. And that is when you have to make a decision. What is worth it to pay that extra price? I remember when I was shopping for bathroom fittings, I really liked this tab. It's a black matte tap that actually looks somewhat ordinary but just looks very sleek and somehow only that particular shop has it. No matter how much I went around trying to look for more affordable options, I just couldn't find it and it cost several hundred dollars for that particular tap. And because I liked it so much, I almost said yes. Of course, for such a significant purchase, I had to have conversations and discussions with the finance manager. And she was saying that a couple of hundred dollars for a tab is really expensive. And with that amount of money, we can do a lot more 
for other parts of the house. I was persuaded. At that time, of course, I was a little sad, but then at the end of the day, I think it makes perfect sense to sacrifice um, that particular aesthetic of the tap and to apply it to enhance aesthetics of a lot of other areas of the house. So I am glad that I listened and uh, we went with another tap. It's a silver matte tap in the end and it still looks very good in the house. So completely no regrets. Going on to the lips and the next question is what feng shui elements did you incorporate in your house? I don't think we have a luxury of space to even consider incorporating the feng shui but earlier I mentioned that one of my favorite spots is actually sitting at the dining table so after we open up the space where the dining is extended to the entertainment room the dining area is like the center of the house it kind of feels like there is a good flow of energy or good flow of wind somehow that makes me feel really good staying there experience the wind from behind so from the yard area coming in i can also sense some wind coming in from the entertainment room it just comes to a very good feeling like, which is why i really enjoy sitting down there so I'm done with the makeup look, but I do still have some more questions left. So let me try to finish them. So the next question is, tell me a secret in this house. I don't have a secret. I wish, I wish I have a house big enough where I can build like a secret chamber uh, to hide all my treasures or a secret pathway uh, to do something secretive, but no. Or if I tell you, then it's no longer a secret. Do you think you'll use the gene machine in the closet? I have this gene equipment, like a really huge machine that we hide in our closet at the walk-in wardrobe. And it's actually a request by my partner because we go to this instructor's place to do exercises where he would teach us how to do certain uh, equipment and what is the right posture. But we rarely get a chance to practice at home because we don't have the equipment. My partner really wants us to take home what we've learned and to practice that at home so that we can keep the momentum going. To be honest, I am not very good at knowing how to adjust the machine to use it for my purposes since this is his request he better make sure to use that machine because it is eating up into my closet space <laughs> last question what is your most expensive purchase okay again i needed to check this with the finance manager and he kind of broke down into the most expensive uh, cost for the renovation and also our most expensive appliance purchase. For renovation, the most expensive part is actually the tiling. It cost us 15k to get the tiling done for the entire house, including the bathrooms. We did some overlay for the walls at the bathrooms and that is included in the tiling cost as well. In terms of appliance, our most expensive purchase is aircon, which I think applies to many families. We got a four system, so we have four aircons in our home that cost around 4k. So that is boring. So I'm gonna talk about the second most expensive appliance that we got, which was our washing machine. Our washing machine cost 1.2k. We went around to a lot of different mega stores like Gain City, Harvey Norman, Quartz. But there was only this one particular salesperson who was highly recommending us this washing machine from Electrolux. We weren't aware of the extra price, but somehow we were so sold by the functions that this salesperson was telling us about this washing machine. So let me go through that with you. Okay, not many people know this, but Electrolux is actually a pioneer in front load washing machine. Okay, that doesn't justify the price. Secondly, which I think this was rather significant, it was quite an important factor in my personal preference for this washing machine. It has a large drum and it is stainless steel. So we got a 9kg washing machine. And of course, intention is so that we can wash our bed sheets, uh, our blankets that tend to be heavier. When you compare the drum size of a lot of different washing machines, even though they can support 9kg, the drum size tends to be smaller. Even though it can support that weight, you might not have enough space to put in all your 
clothing. So that is one reason. Secondly, if you're squeezing all of your clothing or your bed sheets, whatnot, into that small drum, it doesn't have a lot of space for it to spin. And spinning should actually help in the washing. Those are the two reasons why I think the drum size makes a difference. There's also another reason why I love this washing machine. I'm gonna read off the notes that my finance manager sent to me. It says the detergent compartment will not clog because it mixes the detergent at a dedicated compartment before dispensing it to the drum. And this is a function called Ultra Mix. I think you can Google this, but I'm just going to read it off. With the Ultramix technology, the detergent and softener is thoroughly dissolved and activated before it enters the drum. This ensures that your clothes are clean without leaving visible detergent residue at the end of the cycle. Yeah, I feel like I'm trying to sell this washing machine. There are also other functions such as vapor care. Ensure that your wash come out 99.9% .9 allergen free. And if I remember correctly, remember old clothes that have a smell, you can also try to get rid of that smell using vapor functions so that you don't have to let it go through a complete washing cycle. I'm sorry, there's one more. It has a sensor wash technology. Basically, it uses AI sensors to automatically detect dirt and soil levels and then adjust the cycle duration accordingly to effortlessly remove 49 different visible stains including oil, red wine, mud, and chocolate. So those are the reasons why we decided to get that expensive washing machine. Alright guys, so we've come to the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed watching and listening to my stories. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, be it about renovation, about HGV4, BT4, or about beauty, you can leave them down in the comment section below. If you would like to watch more from me, make sure to subscribe. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye! seven tips to help you plan your carpentry for your house renovation. The adjustable shelving is like a strip with holes that stretches across the height of your cabinet. Carpentry around the fridge, you kind of have to leave a gap to allow the fridge doors to open. We used to have each other's playlists. No, no. We used to be each other's best friends. Yeah. We go our separate pathways But your heart's still in mind Yeah And maybe we could try it next week